I, I flew in on uh, what we call Spirit of Bonovia, it's November 8336 Charlie. It was, it was spectacular. There's lots of actions and responsibilities and phone calls and coordination and paperwork and forms, etc., like anything else. But uh, the moment for me was, uh, it was a three ship formation upon arrival. And we got uh, the first airplane down, I was the second to land. And uh, I roll off at the end of the runway down here and I, I turn the airplane around I'm, I'm, and I'm watching the last, you know, our ship number three break in the overhead and, and, and go downwind for, for landing. And it was that moment where I was just like, oh my goodness, we made it, right? And we're here, you know, on hallowed ground, you know, the right field, spectacular. So uh, I was looking forward to it all month, you know, when the opportunity was first talked about. Um, I kind of rallied these guys and just said, look, this is National Museum, the US Air Force is right field. You know, I know we're all West Coast airplanes, we're all 12 plus hours of flying to get here, but uh, what an opportunity. We're sitting here aboard the, uh, the flight deck of Spirit of Bonovia, and um, this obviously is a sacred place for me. This is, this is where, the, where the flying happens. Um, you know, the, the cabin, you know, is, is simply what keeps the flight deck away from the tail of the airplane, right? <laughs> it's, it's a joke, but yeah, I mean, obviously the flight deck is where all pilots gravitate. This is the, this is the bit that interests them. Um, when I'm sitting here, you know, uh, uh, hours on end, you can't help but, you know, let your mind wander back to the fact that this is where, you know, the, the yoke, the throttles, the rudder pedals particularly, are, they're worn. You can see the effects of the human interaction. The act of flying, from a human perspective, is written all over this flight deck, right? You can see the wear spots on the rudder pedals. You know, the, it's a large tailwheel airplane. During the takeoff roll, a large tailwheel airplane, at least this kind of airplane, it tends to want to turn to the left during takeoff, right? It's a left turning tendency during, as it's going down the runway, it's constantly wanting to turn to the left. So we have to apply right rudder. And as such, the right rudder is worn to a greater extent than the left rudder. And it's not me. Right? I've only got a few hundred hours in this airplane. The airplane's got 20 plus thousand hours of flight time. And it's the pilots that have gone previously that have done exactly the same thing and left, unknowingly left their mark on this. So a lot of human history up here, a lot of technological history. The airplane was designed in the middle 30s. And all of these systems date from, from those that period of time. The avionics, obviously, are, are modern. We have to have you know, modern generation avionics to operate in the in the modern air transportation system. But everything else, engine controls and flight controls, are all completely original. Maintained, you know, that we've replaced cables, we've replaced bearings and pulleys as and when they're needed. Um, but nothing has changed about the way the airplane is operated. What we've got here today is the best of both worlds, right? We are, we're at probably one of the most significant museums of, of aviation history in the world, right? And what the museum does is, is take completely unique examples of aircraft and completely unique examples of, of, of human aviation history and preserve them and make sure that nothing happens to them, right? There's no further deterioration. Um, and to do that, you have to protect them, right? Which means in those cases, you, you can't really continue to operate them, right? You, you can't continue to use Ed, Eddie Rickenbacker's diary, of course. But there is also a very important niche, which is keeping the history alive in an operational sense. And that's what we're doing. We've got this opportunity. The airplanes are still here. The airplanes are still usable. We've still got people who are interested in, in funding this. And we've brought the two together today, right? So we've brought these three airplanes in. Um, goodness knows whether any of these airplanes ever operated out of right field in the past, quite possibly. They were all military airplanes. They were all military airplanes in the US. And obviously, you know, right field is a very significant military aerodrome, was a very significant military aerodrome. Um, so we don't know whether they came back, right? But we're here today and we're here with some living history literally living history 
um, at the National Museum of the US Air Force. It's a unique combination. A, if you look at the restoration of a World War II airplane that took place in the 1970s or the 1980s, okay, the approach was to take it back completely to original. And, and just in the last few years, we have started to appreciate that the, the, that the wear on that rudder pedal is an important part of the history that maybe ought to be preserved. Um, so there is a balance there, Ken. Obviously, we can't, we can't leave something that is unairworthy, right, or unsafe. So yeah, the corrosion has to be removed. If the wear is, is beyond limits, it has to be replaced. Um, but, but we are most definitely trying to preserve that human history. As a, as a, as a, a, as a clear example of that, we have another a C-47, a DC-3 slash C-47 restoration underway at our home base shop right now. And uh, it's being done for a museum and we, we, we received the airplane in September of last year and the first stage is just to disassemble it, take everything apart, allow the cleaning to take place which then allows the inspection. Now after cleaning we realized that the cabin was full of signatures. It was full of signatures that had been applied in pencil on the inside of the aircraft when she was operated literally during World War II as a medivac airplane. She was operated out of the UK. She was flying into Europe after the second front, after D-Day. And she was flying supplies in and she was flying the wounded out. And when she flew the wounded out, there were litters, stretchers rigged up inside the aircraft. And throughout the fuselage aligned with these litter positions are signatures. Guys being evacuated, medically evacuated out of Northern Europe, left signatures on the inside of the airplane. And when we realized that that's what we were looking at, um, we contacted the museum and we said, look, you know, this is what we found. Um, and they were, we absolutely have to save those signatures. Can they ask the same questions? Can we save them in the aircraft? Or do we have to remove that sheet metal, right? preserve it separately. And we're like, no, I think in 95% of cases, the sheet metal is fine. There's, there's, no, there's no technical reason that it should be replaced. So we're now you know, many months down the road in this restoration, but we have preserved those panels in the aircraft. They're not, they're not paint stripped, they're not repainted. It is exactly as we found them. So that's an example, I think, of what we're talking about.